Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Arcadia. We are in Planet Zoo again today and in this episode we're going to be bringing the European Badger to Arcadia Zoo. And I've got a few ideas that I want to share with you for this one and it's going to be quite a nice fun little speed build. We're not going to go into developing all of Old Town yet but you will see a couple of little adjustments creeping up and I'll talk to you a little bit more about some of the management changes that have happened. We're not going to do any management this episode, I just want to do a nice new habitat build because we need to start filling this place out with animals. So let's dive into our speed build and I will talk a little bit more about the European Badger build. So I did start this one off by making a massive hole. Uh, I had been playing around and wanted to maybe put like a, an actual properly sized burrow in rather than just using one of the actual ones available in game. But then after a while I decided that this wasn't such a good idea and the best thing to do would be to get our badges in straight away and uh, start seeing what they want, also allowing me to do some of my research as I'm going. So we put in a simple wall here using some dry stone and I think they are the European stone wall support beams that are on the top, very much in the same way that we have with some of the buildings in Old Town to use that framework. And it was just a case of moving all of these around and making a nice little wall for our habitat so that the badgers aren't going to escape when they actually get put in place. And we moved this all the way around to our barrier door where our gate is and just made them null barriers as well. I'm going to come back and finish that off, but for now I just want to carry this on and I don't actually think the badgers can escape through those little gaps that we've got, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. The other thing that I wanted to do today uh, in terms of this build is work out how we're going to do the other side where the train goes by. And I have a few ideas on this one, but the one that I'm going to go for is to create a little river going through here that actually leads out into the main body of water. So as you can see there, our habitat has ended up being a little bit bigger, so we're going to need to make a few adjustments to this. We're just moving everything around here so that it's on the other side of the train track because we're going to have a small stream cutting through it, and it's actually going to be a kind of runoff from the town. So whatever water and stuff has been draining out of the town itself has ended up coming through a little stream here and into the larger canal ways. And I think it was a really nice touch and it gave me a chance to play around with some of the water features and things like that. So that was pretty good. The other thing I want to do is build a little house for the badgers. Now again, I do end up putting in a um, a little badger den underground, you know, the what, what are they called? The things that are, uh, the burrows, that's the one. I put a burrow in, but I actually had a few issues with it. The uh, badgers were going in and then when they were coming out, they were kind of getting stuck in place and just uh, looping the same animation when they were at the entrance to the burrow. So in the end, uh, after this episode, I deleted the burrow and we're just going to use these little hides that I've created. The other thing that was going on was the badgers weren't actually using these. They were preferring to go straight to the burrow. So after playing around with this little roof, I decided that I didn't want to use the, a standard roof piece and preferred to create my own using the arctic wood um, slabs here. And this is just going to be a simple little area where we're going to have uh, windows on either side and a little bit of bedding in the main entrance way to it and a little ramp going up to it. And actually seeing this in action, you will see it in the actual finished like tour part of the video. It looks really nice and the badgers all look all cute and curled up in there and I think it adds a nice little touch to this one. We've got two of these so I do duplicate this one and move it up to the other side of the habitat just in case they're feeling a little bit shy and want to get away from the guests. This is mainly going to be the guest viewing one so the guests will be able to have a nice full view of our badgers sleeping in this little room. The last few things to do are just to make a few adjustments here so that we've got wood beams coming all the way through to give that support to it and cover up any of the imperfections from the stonework that lies underneath, sink it into the ground and then put our entrance ramp in. Now after putting in this entrance ramp I decided that I didn't like the flooring as it was so we just continued on this arctic wood to make that hide complete and duplicated it across. After finishing that off, we then just covered in that hole because we don't need it anymore. We're going to run a stream all the way through, like I've already said, and we're going to build out from there. The next step was to put in a little bit of foliage so I can kind of work out where I'm going to be putting my scenes and my decorative areas for this build. We're going to run a few trees along the opposite side of the train track because we're going to want to finish that off as well in this episode so we don't have to come back to this area. And I've got a few ideas on that as well that I want to talk about later on. Just making sure that we've actually got some bedding in for the badgers to sleep on and uh, to notify them that this is a safe area for them to go and sleep seeing as we don't yet have the burrow 
in, but we will be putting one in and like I've already said, it's already come out because it doesn't work for me and I prefer to be able to see my badgers sleeping. After completing that, it was time to start our stream. So I wanted to just map this out to begin with. We've got this really crude looking pathway being cut through right now and we're just testing out the water levels on it. As you can see it's a little bit shallow for my liking right now so we're going to have to smooth it down a little bit more and then sink the terrain a touch more. It's still far too shallow there so I like things a little bit deeper especially when I'm doing something like this because I'm going to need to create some sort of a like a grate where the water is going to flow out from underneath Old Town which is what we're going to be doing now and we're going to be using dry stone blocks for this. The archway is perfect and then we'll put in a little bit of a glass there. I didn't like that so that eventually got taken out and I built my own grid for it really just to kind of accentuate things a little bit more and obviously the glass you you can't really look past it i mean you might not notice it but i'll know it's there and i don't really like that dry stone slabs going in there as well and then we'll put in some iron posts painted black and then spaced out across to kind of create that sewage runoff great it's not going to be sewage i promise you it's it's water it's rainwater drainage that's what we'll call it <laughs> um, i don't really like the fact that there's going to be raw sewage flowing through my badger habitat so it's it's rainwater only now uh, the sewage goes somewhere else <laughs> we put in some square metal support beams painted them black as well and then just gave it like a little two-tier system we sunk the terrain down a little bit and then brought it back up to make it match and then smoothed everything else off around put in our water again and i think that looks pretty good obviously at the moment you kind of see the terrain behind it but we are gonna cover that up i'm just gonna have like a little like a black um shape put in there so that it's just hidden and this water looks like it's coming out from a, an invisible wall i guess <laughs> But um, the actual water special effects kind of cover that up so you don't really notice it too much. Then it's time to do our rock work. And this is just, again, another base layer that I can build on top of and do some terrain painting on the other side. We obviously want all of our terrain to blend into one another and uh, make sure that the badgers can't possibly escape because they could actually still get into the water and get out some other way. And the only little bit, we're just going to do a quick check. There you go, you can see there. And the only issue there is that the barrier is too short on that side of the habitat. So just make an adjustment there, as you can see, and the badgers can't escape anymore. Next, it was about painting the terrain. We wanted to make a few adjustments here to the levels of terrain first, and then we put in our soil, building up all the way around, and then a little bit of heavy soil and then rock work seeping through so that it blends very nicely and evenly we put rock all the way on the uh, riverbed here and then carried on just making sure that the uh, badgers are always happy with the terrain painting work that we're doing next i wanted to put in a little bit of a scene here where the water is going to flow into the main body of water around old town so we brought in our planet zoo logs and some fallen trees and broken pines and stuff and one little tip I can give you here, which I really love using, is the actual stumps. If you flip them upside down, the actual roots showing up rather than the stump itself, you get a really nice effect like there's little bits of sticks and twigs and stuff gotten caught in this main mass of tree stumps and things. And it's a really nice effect. You can see it here where they're just poking out. I've used this before and I really like it. I think it really helps to finish off builds like this when you could just put in a load of trees and stuff and have them overlapping. You really get that really nice like gnarled root work that's gotten stuck in there. Then we put in our special effects. You can see stuff going off in the uh, UI there. That's because uh, I'm having to use play the simulation basically so that I can test out all of the waterworks that we're putting in. This took a little bit of time to get right, but I was pretty happy with the outcome in the end and we have it flowing right into the main body of water. Next, we put in some special effects on our actual grate where the water's coming out from underneath Old Town. And don't worry about it, we're gonna decorate the top end of that as well. I used some of the uh, Rapids foam to dictate where the water's gonna be flowing to on its journey to the main body of water. And we do do this a little bit further around the stream itself so that you can see a definitive flow of water in this area which is really nice. Uh, I really like playing around with some of the special effects. Now, I'm not the best when it comes to the water and stuff, but I think I'm getting better. And it's nice to be able to 
putting a few rocks sticking up out of a river and then having splashes going up against it as if it's disturbing the flow of the water. We put in a few more elm trees just so that I could create some dedicated scene work for this build and then started coming in with some cornflower. We're using daisies and a few other bits and pieces. Lady fern making appearance here. I really like lady ferns. I think they're really nice. And then hawthorn bushes and that, that's pretty much our main usage of foliage in this one. I like hawthorn bushes as well because you can mix in other like little pops of greenery in between them. They've got that really nice light shading to them and you can just sink other bits and pieces in between them to create a little bit more of a texture and a little bit more of a contrast in your foliage work. Then we came in with meadow buttercups because once again, the badgers have a really nice uh, leniency when it comes to the types of foliage they can have in a habitat and the amount of coverage you can have with foliage so you can really go all out and make these really nice green spaces which we i always like to do hawthorn bushes again and then i always like putting them around the base of trees because i think that gives you a nice little effect where they've kind of grown around the base of a tree and things have continued to expand and grow around that Obviously, you'd have a lot of competition for sunlight and grass around a tree. Grass? I meant water. Speaking of water, we're putting in our water pipe here and a food bowl for our badgers. And then I decided to put in the burrow. I originally put it there and then messed around with a few different placements for it. None of which really appealed to me. But this one here was my final sort of location for it. And I really like it there. The only problem is, as I've already mentioned, the badgers seem to get stuck on exiting the burrow. And I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. We just had to adjust a few things with the water pipe, putting that right next to the wall and then moving some of the flowers out there so there wasn't too much overlapping going on. And then sinking in a few bits of cladding so we had nice little bits of rock work sticking up out of the ground, making sure once again the terrain painting all matched up. You don't want, I don't really like a, a rock kind of sticking up and having grass right around it. I prefer to have a little bit of soil coverage and then having it blend back out into grass work. The last thing I wanted to do, because I did get a little bit of research done, was put in a few enrichment items. So we've got a ball, a tennis ball, and an enrichment feeder, and then a sprinkler, which I hid in the hawthorn bushes. Really happy with how this one's turning out. And then finally, I wanted to finish off the trim work on the rocks down by the river. And this was just to make sure that things didn't stick out and look too messy. Uh, I don't always do this and uh, I've started trying to do a little bit more on this. This is the kind of major detailing that makes a build stand out and you'll see a little bit later on what we do further on to increase this a little bit because at the moment it's all just kind of plain textures and plain colours so we're going to put in some bushes and stuff to really finish it off. I tried with hawthorn bushes but it didn't really work and then I've decided to put in my new favourite which is bramble bushes. Now these will grow anywhere naturally. They overtake everything. They're a little bit invasive and uh, there's a lot of brambles in the UK that kind of end up trimming farmland and stuff and I really like it. I think they look really nice. It also is a bit of a natural natural barrier because it'll stop people trying to climb through and get onto farmland and then we put in some mossy rocks as well just to actually finish it all off because this is a little bit of a wet area and you're going to have constant flow of water so it does encourage the growth of moss and the brambles obviously they are pretty resilient so I felt like these were the best plants to put in here we then came around and put in some water lilies because I just think they're a nice finishing touch and finishing off, we did put a little bit more of a rock work in there as well. I kept trying with hawthorn bushes, but it didn't seem to work at all. I decided a willow would be a great idea on this side of the habitat and the opposite side of the train. So the train actually clips the bottom of that willow as it goes through. And then I just wanted to put in like a signifier, like a big rock that kind of sticking out over there. So the badgers, if they were feeling so inclined, could climb up to that rock and stare at the train as it goes by. Decided to put in a little bit more of a three-dimensional look with the rocks on the side here. So we put in a few more and then sunk some brambles in around it just to finish it off and then make it look like this bramble was creeping over into the water and it kind of spread out from there. A little bit more moss going in, but pretty happy with how this one's looking now. And then I wanted to put in a few rocks sticking up out of the river itself so we could add in a few more water effects like splashing up against a rock and stuff like that because I think they make a really nice finishing touch to a build like this. You really want your streams to really be standing out, especially because they just tend to look like normal 
boring bodies of water when you actually first put them in and they do need something to bring them to life so that's what we did and then we put in the rapids foam coming through there as well i could maybe do with another one of those but at the moment i'm happy with how that one is next we're going to turn this into a planter and we're going to put in a little bit of a nod to our Shawalski's horses by decorating it with some statues of them i started with some basic rock work here just uh, moving the temple stone supports along but it didn't didn't turn out right but you can see i'm leaving this in so you can see what it originally looked like it was just this flat texture which again there was a lot of overlapping and it didn't have too much about it i did try putting the statues on here as well just to see if it could distract but it doesn't really draw the eye and it doesn't have much about it so we eventually started this whole process again and built something a little bit better using planters and i brought in the classical planner after trying out a few new world ones and a few different bits and pieces nothing really sat right so i moved on to these planters and decided to make like a little bit of a shape with them so we had it coming across here and then duplicated that to create this hexagonal i guess not really a hexagon it doesn't really match the dimensions of a hexagon but it's an odd shape and then i sunk in some mulch after putting these dry stone not dry stone the temple stone supports in we then got a big patch of mulch to fill in the middle you can see it looks a little bit off center at the moment so i do end up sorting that out by moving the whole section across we have two shawalski's horses staring at each other across this planter and then I just moved everything along a touch to make sure that everything was a little bit more even on either side of it. Dunk the mulch back in, got it all lined up, and then we can start putting in some plants. So we're going with Alpine Currents because we've not used them yet and I do like the texture of them. I think they're a really nice model. We then put in some Alpine Basilia to finish it all off. I just thought it would be nice to have like a little bit of an Alpine theme going on here because I'd like to carry that on as we move further into the zoo and go into a little bit more of a different biome. So here we are putting in our little bit of a hideaway so that you can't see what's behind the grid. We put in some more bits and pieces to finish this one off. I did complete a little bit more research as well and then we just needed to line this up with the gate for the habitat itself. I'm not too happy with this so we are changing it as well. Uh, it just doesn't match up quite right for my liking. And we're going to do that now, starting with a stonework frame because I want to continue the effect from the wall and create this like entrance for staff. We're not going to do like a little backstage area for this one, but I do plan to add some of those into future builds. And I want to just create a simple trellis to go with this stone frame. And I really like this African plaster trellis that you can get if you've researched the African, uh, the North African pack. And then we're just putting in a few more stone pillars to finish this one off. We're going to change the color of the trellis to black and just line it up so that the keypad for the gate itself is sticking out of the stone. Then we just need to match up our wall so that it fits seamlessly, change the color of the trellis and then do a little adjustment. I did put a TV screen on here. I'm going to put in like a custom thing here for staff where it's like a time it was last checked and stuff and then line it all up and we're good to go next up as promised we're going to finish off the design that is a little bit outside of the habitat itself just to get rid of this like blank space that's in the end of the habitat where the train is going past and the little island that's been created by the stream running by coming in with our terrain brush again just to make sure everything's evenly spaced and matched up and Got a nice little gradient going from texture to texture. Then back in with our cornflowers because it was something that was used in the habitat itself and we need to have that continuity going through. Again, more uh, dandy daisies. Are the daisies? They're daisies, but the other ones weren't. They were buttercups. More meadow flowers, basically, and then brambles coming back in as well to finish it all off. And as we are at the entrance to Old Town, I think it's appropriate that we do a sign. Now, in the UK, our old rail system, you had these really like big iron signs that just had text kind of woven onto them. It was not woven, I suppose they were attached. So they were like iron and steel mixed. So I'm gonna do that after we've put in these little insect houses. I think it's just a nice touch to add these on here because we've got this nice little bit of natural landscape that we want to finish off. And right here on the corner, as you come round into Old Town, we're going to have a nice welcome to Old Town sign. 
and I started off with some iron posts but we decided to give ourselves a little bit of a guide by using a one meter long piece just uh, one meter a four meter long piece that is one meter high and that allowed us to put in our guides here and get the actual basic steel framework of the sign in place now i did want to use the noto font font in 3d but it wasn't working out for me it was far too big so the next step was to get rid of this and use the 2d noto font and give it a wooden background so you see a lot of these in the uk uh where our old rail network is still used predominantly so it was the the network that was built when we first started expanding our train network and it basically had the mileage signs from a to b if you were at a major station it would point out that it was like 120 miles to edinburgh or 120 miles to newcastle things like that and they are still there they aren't used as much anymore but they're a nice little leftover part of our past that i kind of wanted to lean into for this build so we used some of the wooden arbor planks and turned them a nice shade of brown and then made a little bit of a framework for our text to sit on obviously in the uk because they have larger 3d fonts on these they're actually just floating almost there's no background to them so it, it would have been nice to create that but the uh, 3d fonts were a little bit too big so we had to go with this sunk that into place and then gave it a nice new location just on the bend as they come to old town so when people are coming on that train they're going to see that they're being welcomed to old town i guess and the last thing i just wanted to stick a rake in this right next to it and a couple of buckets just to give it that extra little bit of a touch i mean there's no rhyme or reason to this i just think adding tiny little personal touches like this make a build it's like as if somebody's been there doing a little bit of work clocked off for the day and just left their equipment there to come back and do a little bit more work at a later date that is very much all we've got time for so i'm going to leave you with this nighttime walk you can see we've added some lighting and there's the old town sign as the train comes around uh -huh. and we're back to daytime where we see our badgers in their habitat that's all we've got time for today i'm going to leave you with this tour to play out and admire how cute the badgers are and also the amazing view that they have when they go to sleep <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed this one as much as i did making it it was a lot of fun to do this one i think i had a lot more fun doing this than i did with the other two habitats because I, there was so much creativity to be done in this one and i hope you enjoyed it thank you all again for your time if you are new here please consider subscribing i'd really appreciate you coming along for this i do a lot of planet zoo amongst other things and it'll just be really nice to have you along for the ride Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time. Bye bye.